following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. We have Mike from Chicago on the line, and he has a question about digestion. Hi, Mike. Hey, guys. Happy Friday. Happy, Happy Friday. Friday. First of all, I just wanted to say that I love the show. I think it's uh, it, it's great programming, and I'm very much of a like mind when it comes to you know taking control of your own health and certainly doing your own research. Call now, toll free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now your hosts, Nico Dehan and Paige Clark. Happy Friday and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, exploring our return to a more balanced, natural, wild world where we have personal choice, personal health, and personal freedom. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nico DeHaan, and Paige is uh, out right now, but she should be here shortly, so I think she just got delayed a little bit. But anyway, it's a beautiful day here in downtown Clearwater. It's like 67 degrees. The sun is shining. It's going to get up to about 71 degrees, so it's, uh, it's very nice here in central Florida on the west coast of Florida, downtown Clearwater. Uh, please pick up some Primal Edge, folks. If you want to get healthy, this is one of the tools you can use to uh, supplement uh, your vitamins and minerals, and uh, it has a great delivery system of fumic and humic acid that uh, take the goods where it belongs. 100% of the uh, ingredients are uh, in included in your body and they're just transmitted to make you feel good also please check out my health signals newsletter i got a new one coming out next week on the first friday you get that on the first and third friday of every month ten dollars a month gets you two issues of the best news in health and diet relating to just being healthy on a general basis. You can all uh, do this, of course, on the TFNN website, which is tfnn.com. And you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, a lot of things happening, folks. Uh, first thing, uh, I got, uh, you know, with last week we were talking that uh, Rob had contacted us and uh, he had, uh, well, let me just read a little bit about, uh, he had a, a kind of unique situation. He uh, was, um, he said, I'm writing about your Primal Edge product. I was diagnosed with uh, renal cell uh, carcinoma, which is uh, cancer of the kidney. And he had one kidney removed. And he was questioning whether he should be using a product like our Primal Edge. And um, you know, the pharmacist had some questions about it. And uh, you know, we kind of discussed that. So I, I got a letter back from our person who uh, formulated our product and said, hi, Nico, thank you for your email. This is indeed a unique situation. I would defer to the patient's physician who has the uh, patient's history and detailed information. Of course, that really wasn't the case because uh, the doctor just sent the label to a pharmacist friend of his. And I think he gave him probably a brief description of what was going, going on. Uh, I, uh, she goes on to say, I am not knowledgeable on potential limitations on vitamin and mineral supplements for this patient, but I would imagine it would be a better, better to be cautious. For other populations, the herbs that are cited typically are well tolerated. Even the green tea is decaffeinated. She said that it's difficult for me to respond to the objections of Fulvic without more specific information. We have several clinical uh, pharmacists that review our labels on fumic. Uh, the concern uh, communicated, uh, for the example that was communicated was the use with chlorinated water. Of course, we recommend you don't use chlorinated water. The issue is misunderstood because it arises when surface uh, water is chlorinated for consumption. Uh, chlorine attaches to the uh, molecules. Uh, already in the water that are natural to the water. Anyway, so she basically took the safe side and said, look, you know, well, I don't know what this patient is, and, uh, you know, I always, uh, I think you have to defer to your patient, or to your uh, pharmacist. So that makes sense to me. Uh, let's see, what else was going on here? Um, I went to this restaurant, of course, we had a couple of uh, things that we uh, went to uh, Kara Lynn's, which is a paleo restaurant in downtown Clearwater. And uh, you know, food is so fantastic. I went there, b back there last week. I wrote a review on their website, and they're actually listed on uh, Facebook. I have it here, Kara Lynn's Kitchen, Organic Paleo Cuisine. 
And now they're expanding their hours. Before they were open from 11.30 to 6.30. Now they've expanded their hours to 8, 8 o'clock p.m. So that's kind of nice. Uh, so that the way the dinner crowd has more. And, uh, you know, I got a chance to talk to the chef and everything. And these people are just so awesome. I, I don't think you can get any better food than this. And it's a lot cheaper than going to one of these big chains. And my wife and I do that. You know, we go to uh, a certain restaurant. Uh, it's the Bonefish. And it's decent food. Uh, it's not organic, uh, and uh, in many cases it's not uh, wild or even grass-fed in many cases. Uh, I, you know, I try to get uh, a dish which is kind of wild, so most of the time I'm stuck with fish or shrimp or something like that or lobsters. Uh, but uh, once in a while we get the beef even, you know, I mean, uh, a, a decent piece of beef, even if it's not grass-fed, is a lot better than a lot of other things that I find. So having somebody like Kara Lynn's kitchen in the downtown Clearwater is something I really recommend people, uh, you know, to, um, you know, explore going there. Uh, it's located on Cleveland, halfway between the Capitol Theater and the Starbucks, right by um, the Fort Harrison there on Cleveland Boulevard. So uh, I don't have the exact address, and it's not listed here that I see. But it's awesome. It's easy to find. You can find them on Facebook or just uh, Google anything with Kara Lynn, K-A-R-A Lynn's kitchen. Highly recommend going there. I found this interesting article about grass-fed beef, too, and it's by Dr. McCullough since we're on the food. And, you know, of course, we're coming up to the Super Bowl, uh, and we have all the tendency, you know, let's order some wings in, let's get pizza and stuff like that. And I propose to you maybe changing it this time, make your own wings. Find a good place that has some really decent chickens, wings, uh, you know, that uh, at least the chickens have been walking around, and if they've been getting their own food, so much better for that. Uh, but the same with beef, and there's so many different things, you know. There's a lot of confusion about the term grass-fed. In many cases, it's an abused term. Uh, some producers of be beef will mislead you because it's somewhat uh, undefined in the marketplace. Uh, most all calves are fed grass for a certain amount of time. This one factor allows less scrupulous producer to get away, get away with calling their uh, beef grass-fed. Uh, a lot of people will uh, feed them grass for a certain amount of time and then the last six weeks or so put them in the barn and feed them corn to get fatter so uh, they'll produce a little bit more, uh, you know, poundage. Uh, you know, it's still better if it's grass-fed and it's uh, the grass is there that you bring it to the cows a lot different if the cows roaming around and finding its own. In fact, I always propose that the wild is better. But what really happens to a cow that eats the grains and the, and the feed that's normally found in these large feedlots, or even if you're feeding, you have a cow and you're feeding the corn, let's say, it actually changes the fat. Protein pretty much stays the same, but the fat content really changes, and what happens is the uh, omega-3s stay about the same, but the omega-6, which are the under more undesirable fat, because these are fats that uh, have a high inflammatory rate whereas your omega-3 has a very low inflammatory rate. So you're really getting beef that, w that is much more inflamed, m uh, more acid content too. So if you take a wild animal, you'll find that uh, th their uh, ratio of the, you know, we're talking pretty much large animals like antelopes and like deer and you know large meat like that, you'll find that uh, it's pretty much like wild salmon as far as the ratio of the salmon, uh, the uh, omega-3 to omega-6, so that's pretty cool. Uh, something else here, uh, when the demand for grass-fed uh, is realized by the beef industry, the number of producers will increase, and uh, that can take place uh, in a very short amount of time. In Australia, 70% of all Australian cattle are pasture-raised and finished, such is not the case in the United States. So what we find is that a lot of the beef that we're getting here in the United States that are grass-fed, it's also imported. So that means it's aged and not aged in a good way, if you know what I mean. It's probably frozen someplace, and then it's shipped. And, uh, you know, it could be on a container ship for many, many months. Who knows? Um, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that it's U.S.-based product. That's the first step.
It's also impos uh, impossible to know if the producer, if it's in Uruguay, from South America, or it's from Australia, or from New Zealand, you really don't get to know the producer. So it's nice to get on the telephone for somebody that's you know pretty local, or maybe even go there. You know, and find out what these people are doing. So the more humane the, these animals are be tr being treated, and the more they're allowed to just wander around for themselves, the the higher quality is it's going to be for sh for you. So I recommend if you're going to uh, you know get some burgers, it'd be nice to get some grass-fed burgers. Uh, those are much easier to find than other cuts of meat. If you're going to do chickens, you know, try to get some uh, pasture chickens and uh, get them flown in for the game or if you have it local that'd be great then you can fix them by yourself and that stuff is so easy to fix I, I just find myself cooking more often than not because you know the quality of what you get when you're going to one of these wing houses or the pizza places it's just not there and you're not going to feel as good and there's nothing like you know feeling really good after you ate a meal and you're not stuffed because you're so satisfied with you know the food that you're getting and I, that's my contention always is that the more satisfied you are the less likely are you are to vary off the path and start eating a bunch of junk at least that's the way it is with me so what else is going on here you know there's a summit which i thought was really interesting and uh, i'll pull it up on this telestrator here it's really based on for uh, children and the teen health summit and there is going to be a lot of interviews with a lot of uh, people that uh, know uh, here's sarah j there's uh, carla atherton and all these speakers are going to be talking about you know health of your ch uh, children about the parenting, about uh, clinical oriental medicine, about uh, fitness for your child, about the uh, about getting your child more in tune with nature, activities that you can do to stimulate that, uh, you know, different disorders that people are describing now, and how to naturally face these things instead of having the alternative where your child is being drugged by uh, our local health uh, care and insurance people. So you can see here on the Telestrator, raising our children and raising ourselves. Uh, what's the rush? Enjoy the slow family life. We seem to be in a rush a lot, I think. Uh, here's another one, pregnancy and post-pregnancy about the man. You know, that's one of the real trage tragedies in our modern society that we start off the women who are pregnant on different kinds of drugs and start our children right away getting vaccinated and getting these drugs that we don't really know a lot about. And a, a lot of the th uh, clinical analysis that Paige and I come up with shows you that this might need not be the best thing and we kind of see that in if you look at the whole scope of the population how what does our po whole population look at go in the you know, go down to the mall or go into the one of these wing places and check well I really don't go in there but you know what I mean you look at the population and you find out that 90% of these people are sick and not doing well and that's kind of a shame so Paige and I are going to be right back I think she just walked in so uh, we'll be right back and uh, we're taking your calls 877-927-6648 we'll be right back You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800 851 -0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Paige Clark. Sorry I missed the beginning of the show, no my buddy. Had a little conflict, but I'm here. I'm glad to be here. And we're living a primal lifestyle. And, you know, you were just talking a little bit, reminding everybody it's a great time to make sure they're being mindful that they're getting their uh, animal-based foods from mm -hmm. the right sources, the grass-fed meat, the free-range chickens. Because, folks, these are entirely different sources of meat with the proper fat nutrients that you need to be healthy. Um, you know, I was... Uh, reading an article that was, uh, I found a new, a new friend on the internet to follow. Oh, cool. Uh, Dr. Wolfson. Uh, he's an integrative cardiologist, and he's, um, and a lot of his posts really share that to be healthy, he's determined that it's just absolutely heart critical that we follow a paleo primal type lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple of articles, um, and I wanted to share this one about vitamin A, the first vitamin in our alphabet soup. Um, a lot of people, you know, we're talking about how to keep our kids healthy, yeah. how to keep ourselves healthy in the winter. And uh, vitamin A is truly the first vitamin in the alphabet, but it's also the first vitamin you might want to consider when you start to feel like you're coming down with something. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. Um, no, normally I think of vitamin C. Yeah, well, they actually yeah. work together great as, a, uh, as right. a partner. We do, we should think of that, but there's a long-term deficiency in vitamin A that usually is associated with people that get sick all the time. And okay. vitamin A, I like people to think of uh, mucous membranes. Okay. Well, what is the mucous membrane? The whole respiratory tract. No doubt about the it. The eyes, yeah. vision, mm -hmm. eyes. And um, so anyways, this Dr. Wolfson uh, was sharing that, uh, you know, let's take a look at vitamin A. I also 
have a first response um, pediatric protocol that I recommend that people employ for themselves or their kids if mm -hmm. they start to feel something coming down. And the reason I wanted to go through this is I know we have a lot of people that listen to our show that do follow a paleo primal. We have some people like Confetti Vores that are more uh, orientated towards a vegan Just or vegetarian. Yeah. But I want to make sure we understand the difference between the vitamin A's. And a lot of people don't, and they make some assumptions. So can okay. we go through this yeah, a little bit? Yeah, let's do that. Um, you know, there's really two forms of vitamin A's. There's kind of the plant-based vitamin A family, right. and then there's the animal-based Right. Uh, now, vitamin both of them are fat-soluble vitamins, aren't they? Correct. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's needed for childhood bone growth, reproduction, epithelial cells, vision, and immune support. Yeah. Um, you know, it was actually explorers and sailors divided vitamin A deficiency while at sea, which led to night blindness. So if you start to see your eyesight uh, waning a little bit at night, you know, you might want to really take a look. And where are you getting your vitamin A? And it needs to be uh, the retinoid form, the animal form, that really mm -hmm. works is mm -hmm. the form that we're looking for. Um, but so there's also vitamin A and other things like carrots and yeah, dark gonna, Yeah, vegetables, I want to right? clear that yeah. up because okay. I think I get a lot of people that come to me and they're, they say, well, I eat a lot of vegetables that have vitamin A, but it's the fact that they don't really, they don't have the ability to do the conversion. Yeah, so because just even the plant ones, if I, if I remember correctly, need an animal fat to convert it. Right. That's my understanding of it. Mm -hmm. So the plant uh, fats aren't able to convert that, and it's the fats that convert the vitamin A to a usable form in our body. You are so correct, okay. and that's why we love fat so much. Yes. Healthy fats. Yeah. Because these fat-soluble nutrition enable us to cleave our minerals and other nutrients so our body can do the alchemical change yeah. so we can use them. And so this is, I think, too, a main uh, confusion where uh, people who are vegetarians will say that you know, we can get most of the vitamins from our plants, and they're right. It's can you use them? But can you use them? And that's, that's the big really thing. And point. I think we're finding out more and more. There's more evidence to state that the animal fats, proper animal fats, like we're talking about from great sources, are the missing link and the ones that really take these vitamins and kind of explode them in your body to be able to use them 100% of the time. Kind of like the fulvic and the humic acid does for uh, the vitamins and minerals that we send into the cells with our product. Exactly, exactly. So just to uh, kind of further this along, you know how we've often heard that these sailors hundreds of years ago were called limeys because they realized that the citrus fruit, the lime mm -hmm. and the right. lemon would correct the scurvy. Right. Well, they also found that organ meats mm -hmm. would correct the night blindness. Mm -hmm. So again, you see this, uh, this, so I want you guys to, you know, as you're starting to build your winter survival, see in Florida here, we consider this our winter. We're in January, or, <laughs> no, our fall, this is, if there's such degrees. a thing yes. here. I love it. Uh, have some, some animal-based vitamin A on hand if you start to feel like you're coming down with something you know, get your vitamin C, but also get your vitamin A to... And, of course, cod liver oil is, is another good source for, for vitamin A, I That's believe. That's why yeah. a lot of traditional uh, cultures have thrived yeah. on the right forms. We, I like, if you're going to use one, a lot of them are added. They have synthetic vitamins added, but green pastures doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so liver is a great source. And a fermented source is... is yeah, green much, pastures yeah. is a fermented yeah. cod liver oil. Okay. Uh, green pastures, cod liver oil, grass-fed butter, liver... So um, again, eat your fat so that you can use the right, get the right forms of the vitamin A to keep yourself healthy during this winter. I concur. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. heard Nico DeHaan as co-host of Living a Primal Lifestyle, which airs every Friday at noon Eastern Time on TFNN, and would like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. 
Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Nico and Paige here on Living a Primal Lifestyle. You know, this morning I uh, was reading the paper while I was having breakfast, and there was this uh, little blurb about... Uh, people disagreeing with scientists and I thought about that for a second I thought well I'm not sure that is actually true that we disagree with scientists themselves I know this global warming thing 97 percent of all scientists agree bunch of you know crap as far as I'm concerned uh, we all agree that you know when we listen to the scientists that there's pollution in the air and we well, depends clean on up. which science you're looking at well yeah Don't you it's, agree? it's you know it's not the scientists that I disagree with it's the propaganda from either a, a government or a big corporation telling us that this is okay I mean most people they say in the survey that, that they don't uh, agree with GMOs where most they say most scientists say well it's no problem GMOs is scientific you know well, that's uh, just but like the scientists vaccines. that I know aren't saying that to me right and that's what I'm saying like with my passion pro you know subject of vaccines uh, you know that and, and doctor that said we've got to stick with science and make sure these children get vaccinated but the science clearly proves when you open up an insert that they're not safe and have never been proven safe and effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the whole point. That headline says it all. Yeah. From GMOs to client, climate to vaccines, the public disagrees with scientists. Yeah. And the question is, 
uh, my people or your people? Who's scientists? That's yeah. the whole point. Yeah, and uh, it's, uh, you know, the vaccines, uh, that's a big thing, and I, I hear on CNN and everything, uh, all the people who uh, are getting sick are the people who weren't vaccinated. Uh, it's a big, uh, you it's know, complete, problem. completely opposite is what the that's truth is. That's the information that I get, too, but even if it was the people who weren't getting vaccinated, if you're getting vaccinated, why are you worried? Exactly. If the vaccine so works. Yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. Mm -hmm. And I would prefer my child to get the measles and be over with than get the measles later on in life when it's more complicated. Same with the mumps and same with chicken pox and things like that. They get worse as you get older. Yeah, I love that article that uh, we put into our Insta paper about that father who obviously had done the research. Yes. I don't know, maybe we'll share that. But, but I do agree that um, this is important for us to realize that we are going to have different opinions mm -hmm. based on these... Uh, these subjects and uh, from GMOs to climate uh, there's still huge yeah. wide gaps the surveys have consistently found that only about half of the public believes humans evolved from earlier animals other studies have found that beliefs in human caused climate change divide sharply along political lines you know yeah. the left are leading more towards a global warming uh, the right not so much yeah. uh, you know some of us are looking at uh, some of the science coming out of NASA and other groups, we see some stuff that indicates a global cooling, correct? No doubt about it. You know, if you're following Electric Universe, and uh, I, you know, there's another thing, you know, we have a whole group of scientists that are thinking, well, along the atomic lines that, the, you know, the, this, uh, the uh, sun is just a nuclear furnace that's burning out and soon it'll, it'll, you know, fade away. And then you have the electrical version of the thing that it's not an atomic bomb at all. It's, it's a big globe of big energy and that our, our solar system is uh, completely different than we thought it was maybe in ancient times that, uh, you know, the Electric Universe, the uh, Thunderbolts project is now t talking about uh, Saturn being the second sun well, in primitive it was originally times. the sun, yeah. It was originally called the sun for, for decades, for eons, and that it moved its orbit and uh, it flung Venus into a projectile close to the Earth, causing major, major catastrophe. And this could have happened in recent times, you know, as, as uh, uh, soon as maybe 10,000 years ago or maybe even sooner. And I watched that movie. If you guys haven't watched it, it's a very thought-provoking documentary called Oops. The Thunderbolts Project. Well, the yeah, the, the movie. Uh, Thunderbolts of the Gods. Thunderbolts of the Gods. Yeah. Google it. Uh, give yourself that gift. Yeah, it's and about I put an it hour. In our, I put it in the previous newsletter, and I will yeah. again. There's another one called uh, Symbols of an Alien Sky, which has three parts to it, and now he just put out a little short blurb of about five minutes talking about how Saturn was the second sun in the sky and that it actually changed, was went kind of supernova, caused all kinds of problems, moved uh, planets that were going around that particular sun and shifted them into orbit around our sun. And, you know, so, and all the pictures and everything that people were drawing on cave walls were the story of what they were seeing in the sky. Exactly, and the way the, the, way the solar yes. system looked. Um, in that movie, The Thunderbolt um, of, the of the Gods, gods yeah. it was, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, they were explaining that our vegetation was probably more of a red hue than a green hue, that the sky itself, day and night, was almost a magenta color. Mm -hmm. a, that's how the sky looked. Yeah, for thousands of years. And that a lot of these diagrams we see in caves all over the world where, where cultures had no ability to communicate, very similar drawings, depicting this planetary alignment and, and um, hierarchy, yeah. uh, preserving it for well, all you know, man. I was, I was watching a talk by Robert Schock, who was, uh, d did some of the preliminary work on dating the Sphinx, and uh, the enclosure of the Sphinx was water-based uh, you know, runoff right, instead of the wind. Mm -hmm. So he was talking about Easter Island, and uh, of course he had discovered that the, the heads weren't just heads. Right, they're they 10 were, feet below. They're 30, 30 feet, feet below. below. Yeah, okay. I mean, it was amazing. Some of them were smaller, some of them were larger. But he also was talking about the Pongo Pongo, which is the language, and nobody had ever been able to decipher it. So he's going on. He says, well, I, my wife and I were watching uh, symbols of an alien sky. 
and we were watching all these cave drawings and it looked like the fusion reaction that would happen in the sky and there's many uh, laboratory experiments where they do these and these little diagrams come out like the man that's st sitting with his hands up with the little gl glowing things underneath him and he was looking at the pongo pongo and his wife says to him boy that looks an awful light like that the little things of the pongo pongo and he starts looking at it and then he starts matching them up with the cave drawings and also matching them up with the experimental fusion reactions that were going on in the laboratory and they looked very much alike in fact he says this is kind of like a storybook like a, a moving picture with just each frame being a little different and if you flick them together you could actually see them moving you know, and I goes, a chill ran down my spine. It goes, oh, this is so cool, you know, that people are actually keep discovering this way. And uh, one of the questions in the chat room uh, is, uh, where do I stand on the ancient astronaut theory? Well, you know, this is something, of course, we don't know. And uh, who knows what was here before? I have no idea. Uh, I have never personally seen a any evidence. I've seen a lot of things that I can't explain in the sky, seen a lot of objects moving, most of them probably satellites and things like that. So until I see something, I see an alien myself, then I can say that, you know, this is true. Uh, However, I, yeah, I'd love in, to reality. Think, in reality, I, I would think that uh, it likely can happen. Well, I think it's kind of almost... Uh um, but the distances, those are hard to, you know, from a scientific, but now if you uh, go with the theory of the electric universe that tr light doesn't travel 186 miles per second, it actually can travel at slower speeds and at higher speeds, but also that there's a lot of things that go on in the universe that are instantaneous. Mm -hmm. In other words, light from a star that we're seeing today is not necessarily billions of years old. It may be instantaneous. And these are some of the theories that the electric universe uh, makes it so exciting because there's a lot of differences. You know, there's no black holes in their theory. There's no expanding universe in their theory. Their theory pretty much states that everything has always been here and will always be here. Mm -hmm. And kind of that's what God always has been too, if you read. Well, the, he's been here forever. He's the all-knowing. Well, that's what the universe is, isn't it? Yeah, it's like always been here. The macrocosm we have and the no, microcosm. We, we have no real proof that it's never ended or it's mm -hmm. e never begun. It's always been here. That's my contention, mm -hmm. is that things just go on and on. And well, the reason it's hard to fathom is because we're, we're, li we're so limited. We have such a short span of life. Right, and what is the past or the future? And that really starts to make you question whether there is anything, you know, at all. <laughs> well, there is now. Yeah. We can say that for sure, and mm -hmm. we know there are things in our lifetime that we know is the past. So that's all I can go by. Mm -hmm. It's nice to think about time machines and things like that. But, but you know, also the space travel. It's uh, very hard to comprehend it because it's not like we think. It's not like Star Trek. I'd love it to be like Star Trek because that would make things simple. We can beam anywhere, but that's not the way we know it. You know, so were you a Star Trek watcher? Oh, of course. I, li I love science fiction. I, I see, love all I, I didn't when I was younger, uh -huh. and now a lot of websites that I read about, because yeah. I'm like you, I'm questioning all. Mm -hmm. um, they'll show us, they'll show us, you know, a series from Star Trek, and you can kind of see that they were hinting at a lot of stuff well, that the, we're the, now discussing. The thing I liked about Roddenberry and uh, Star Trek was all Roddenberry is that he had the prime directive, mm -hmm. which would if we had incorporated that as human beings early on in life the what happened in america wouldn't have happened we wouldn't have genocided you know most of the population we yeah. would have been so careful not to uh infringe on there with our diseases and with our mind the native and our, american yeah and also mm -hmm. our religion and everything and gave that to them so i think that uh uh you know it's it's too bad it's a, and that's what I loved about Roddenberry, his, 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 uh, uh, that framework of the prime directive, that we can't interfere, you know, mm -hmm. that it's a crime to interfere. And that's what I love about the American Indians. They kind of have that the same, because you wouldn't devastate the land for any reason. Uh, to drill a hole, to get oil out, to make a car, it doesn't make sense. What we do is walk, you know, until we find a better way. It's just, and that's what I loved about it, and that's what drew me to that. But I've always loved science fiction, but at the same time, uh, archaeology is the other end of it, you know. Uh -huh. It's kind of like uh, Captain Picard of the next generation was always interested in the going back, and here is a man in the future, and there's the connection there, you know, so. 
uh, yeah, I think surviving on any world would, is, is a cool thing to do, and surviving it as a human being on this world is the most exciting thing, especially now. You know, I'm, I'm 70 years old. Uh, I can look at myself and say, okay, now I'm the grandpa. Yeah. You know, I've got much more experience than I had when I was younger, a lot mellower. To not doing the crazy things I did when I was younger so life is really uh, at a good stage and now having a quality of life and seeing maybe 20 30 years at this level it makes me feel very good about you know life on planet earth doing a show like uh, this and you're and you're a super healthy guy and everybody should want to be your age and doing and yeah, because I have friends I have friends that are my so age that uh, have trouble, you know, they yeah. waddle around, they're heavy, they don't know quite what to do, and when you're stuck there, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's very, very difficult. Yeah. Because and it's difficult just being myself and doing it, because, you know, I have to go and do these things, but I know it's so entrenched in me that I do them gladly, and I get so much joy when I, it's more psychological to start doing it is harder than doing it. Oh, you're it's an, always that way, isn't it? Yeah, you're yeah. an inspiration. And the other thing you talked about, you know, doing crazy things, but guess what? The animals are doing it. You want to know? Oh, yeah. An article in article. Boing Boing, Why Animals Eat Psychoactive Plants. Uh, in a book called Chasing the Scream, The First and Last Days of the Wars on Drugs, uh, we learn about drunk elephants, the stoned water buffalo, and the grieving mongoose. I like that picture. <laughs> um, I like that picture there with the fox. It looks like a fox, but he's definitely looking a little different. Yeah. Um, you know, so evidently, folks, maybe we need to take a look at what's going on. The animals do eat some of these psychoactive plants, and, and it may be that they know something we don't know. Well, I mean, why are human beings drawn to that? I mean, we've always in our past from uh, just about uh, the primal uh, thinking, uh, when we go to the shamans, uh, we go to the medicine man, uh, there's always some kind of psychedelic in, uh inspiration there when we go I'm sure that the chief looking back and has his visions uh -huh. maybe use some enhancement maybe not I mean yeah you know well, there's been indications where I feel great and I feel spiritual and uh, you know it's kind of like uh, getting a buzz on when you're having a drink or smoking a joint or something like that you can feel these things naturally because your body produces those same dope type means the dopamine. Well, let's yeah. just go on. The United okay. Nations says the drug rambling, war. Yeah, the drug war's rationale is to build a drug-free war and you know protect everyone. But you know, let's. And this author says that um, uh, they began to see the goal differently after learning the story of the drunk elephants, the stoned water buffaloes, and the grieving mongoose. They were all taught to me by a remarkable scientist in Los Angeles named Professor Ronald Siegel. Um, and you know what? What he found out is that. Um, you know, these animals are know something about the necessity of using these. You know, yeah, because because they keep doing it. Well, let's go back That's to wonderful. the tsunami, guys. Okay, so we had that tsunami. Mm -hmm. You know, thousands of people died. Correct. Yeah. Not a single animal died, because the animal brain. These animals are in touch at a higher level to the god source, to the prime. The director. only ones that probably died were the domesticated mm -hmm. kind. Well, it could be, but yeah. even that, that there, there's. And there was an exodus of mm -hmm. animals, mm -hmm. cats, dogs, everything, running away. That's what I'd understand. Yeah, so if you see the cats running, and the, the, especially the, uh, the rats running out of the sewers, then you know there's something bad happening because <laughs> when they're leaving their home, you know, the rats <laughs> leave, you've got to leave. So that's, I think. Well, and they seem to know what's going on. Now, here's something, um, uh, you know, the... This, this researcher is really taking a look at the way the animals look at hallucinogens, and maybe we need to kind of take a look uh, that maybe we're, <coughs> we're abusing them, but animals know there can be some wise use for these things. Yeah. So it might be a good book to, to yeah. read, you know? Yeah, uh, it says in the chat room that... Uh, Joseph Campbell's take on the peyote. Yeah, yeah. I've never uh, read that. Uh, I've never taken peyote either. It's uh, never appealed to me because of the throwing up part. Mm -hmm. We'll okay. be right back, folks. we got one more segment left, I think. You know what's cool? 
taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, guys, welcome back. And, you know, geez, I love it when we get all this activity in the chat room. You know, we get going on these kind of yeah. off-the-wall subjects, and uh, we, like, we like hearing what you guys are thinking. So this article about why animals eat psychedelic plants, I want Nico to stick it in the newsletter because it's kind of long, but, yep, I'll do that. you know, uh, this guy was really trying to understand, you know, why is it um, that after sampling a number of nectars of certain orchids, bees drop to the ground in a temporary stupor and they weave back for more, or birds gorge themselves on certain inebriating berries, or and then they fly recklessly in abandoned cats eagerly sniff aromatic pleasure plants 
and then play with imaginary objects. Yeah, everybody wants to de-stress. And yeah, and then and then this other research showed that in Vietnam, remember we mentioned about the drunk water buffaloes? Uh, in Vietnam, the water buffaloes have always shunned the local opium plants. They just did, had no interest. They don't like them. But when the American bombs started to fall all around them during the war, the buffalo left their normal grazing grounds, broke into the opium fields, and began to chew like crazy. It would, they would then look a little dizzy and dulled, and when they were traumatized, it seemed they wanted, like the mongoose, just like us, to escape from their thoughts. Yeah. So, you know, just deciding the war on drugs, there's, there's, there's some reason. And I also say that I'm very interested in all of this because I do believe that some of these may be prime creators' way of trying to reach us, to open up a channel of communication very much like the pineal gland. You know, we've talked mm -hmm. about trying to make sure we decalcify, mm -hmm. you know, get the fluoride out of the water, that we eat foods like the X Factor and grass-fed butter that actually help to decalcify the pineal gland so we can make that spiritual connection. Yeah. The other so. thing they were talking about in the, in the chat room too was uh, well, who do I think built the pyramids and of course there's many structures around the world like the pyramids, maybe not in, in grandeur but they're discovering more all the time. There's hundreds of pyramids all over all at different over the vortex world. points yeah. on the world. And, and there's, uh, you know, I, I think we're probably like Graham Hancock says that we're kind of a species with amnesia and I think uh, there was a catastrophe somewhere along maybe 10,000 years ago or 10,000 BC or maybe even a couple of times and that there were civilizations here that uh, probably solved a lot of different problems that uh, we haven't solved yet as far as building these things and who knows what the quality of life was and we think that uh, we were just hunter and gatherers at that time. We might have been hunter and gatherers but very smart and kept everything wild like I kind of dream of sometimes. We don't know but we know something went on beforehand because nowhere is there any proof that somebody 5,000 years ago built those pyramids. I don't see the proof. I, I see people adding on to the pyramids. I see the initial part of the pyramid being built thousands and thousands of years ago as a marker, as the stars above. And many of these monuments have that ability to shine uh, a kind of transportation it's not a transportation device, but they've marked things in the sky saying, hey, this is what's going on they, here on if, Earth. Yeah, exactly. So, At so this point, when this it. was built, the stars were in a certain alignment. Yeah, yeah. And, and those stars uh, won't be in alignment like that for a long, long time. So th I think they're marking something in the past. And it all points down to about 10,500 B.C. And that's around the time that the Ice Age left us and things changed and uh, I think it's just uh, very very cool to think about these things and people are actually solving some of those riddles and coming up with new ideas and the mainstream a lot of times don't like the, that thing it takes a while for it to sink in but you know we thought the earth was flat before we thought that the sun uh, wasn't the main thing in the sky for us and know? that's what we're doing here guys yeah. you know uh, we believe that uh, you know there's things that we might believe today that tomorrow we change our mind on and that's what we want to do here. We have yeah. an interactive conversation. We look at news. Yeah, and one thing the Electric Universe solves is the problem between the atoms and the sun. It's, it shows that they're the same thing. So as you go smaller, the same electrical th things work in larger form. And it just makes sense because that's when we look at a microscope, we see little planets and neutrons and things like that. So that's it, folks. We're out of time. Hey, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next time. Yep. Live a primal lifestyle. See ya. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. 
You're watching Tiger TV.